Recently, I popped my SIM card back in my S10 Plus. The design was just too amazing to stay away from. This is the S10 Plus ceramic, which I only was able to afford based on the trade-in deal that Samsung was offering, which was amazing. The ceramic body adds significant weight that helps the feel just from a qualitative perspective. It's just nicer. I haven't had a screen protector on the device and it's still in great shape. I know, I, I know, I'm out here living that dangerous life. The phone did drop once on tile and it survived and it has a small shiner on the steel framed edge, but other than that, it's in great condition. The size of the device is perfect for me because my fingers are longer and I can use it with one hand, no problems without it feeling too small. One thing I wanted to address is that when the phone came out, a lot of people mentioned that the power button being too high. Technically it is, but it's not bothering me. I have never once let out a sigh of frustration when I had to take a screenshot. Now let's talk about the screen and the punch hole. It's not ideal, but I understand that it's a step that Samsung has taken before it gets to the goal of however it'll get an all screen display. I don't know how far they are away from that goal, but I do see other companies getting there before Samsung by other methods. Now all apps don't really work perfectly with the punch out like Netflix. They create a thick border at the top of the screen when you're viewing videos. Now you can go into the settings to work around this, but it's not perfect. The back button shows up behind the punch out when you're doing this. Other apps like the internet browser browser will also have that thick border when you're in landscape mode, but other apps like YouTube work perfectly fine with it. The quality of the panel is really nice and the colors have a great balance toward them. Now there's only two display modes, there's vivid and natural. Icons pop and look very vibrant in vivid mode. In natural mode, it's a bit warmer in the white balance and a little bit dull looking, but not boring, but I tend to mostly stay in the vivid mode. Outdoor visibility is no issue on this thing, which I'm really happy with, especially when I live in Florida. It's literally called the sunshine state. So let's talk about the software. So here's the thing that I see people still holding on to and I still see in some comments, but there's no lag. It's performing at a very snappy pace. I think Samsung's main focus was being super responsive, but not having the quickest device out there. But the updates, I mean, I'm not even talking about the next operating system. I mean, just security patches. Android's open source, which means security patches are needed to keep your device safe. And I'm still on May. It's mid July now. Uh, it's always been a problem and it still is for me. But as far as the rest of the software, Software. One UI is hands down the best option in my opinion on Android. I wasn't feeling the icons at first, but I got used to them. Samsung offers a robust theming engine to customize almost everything about the device. The native night mode, which also extends to elements like the keyboard, helps conserve battery life a tad bit longer. And well, it looks hella cool too. I also haven't found any new glitches, which I'm usually pretty good at. Also, Bixby is still there and I really don't use it a lot, but I do use the quick commands. One press of the button allows me to pull up my Samsung pay and that's really convenient for me. But overall, it's snappy, responsive, highly customizable, pleasing aesthetically. It's just overall great. So the Galaxy series is known for offering many options. Some of them make headlines, but not all of them are used. This is the case with reverse wireless charging. Ain't use it not one time. I mean, ask for the review period, obviously, but yeah, I haven't really used it. Now this is where you can wirelessly charge another device with your phone that is Qi wirelessly compatible to be charged. I so far haven't been in that situation where I needed to use it or where I just found it handy. That's just my life. Now there's also an ultrasonic fingerprint sensor and it's okay, I'm not gonna lie, I like it, but I haven't had any major issues, but I do want a more accurate version in the future. For now, it's just a really good first generation technology. So the S10 from the S9 is a huge departure in the design language. So a lot of technologies had to be forfeited to enable this design. One of those is the iris scanner. It's no longer there. There's just really no room for that sensor without making the punch hole bigger. Um, I really don't miss it. I never really used it, but I do miss the LED indicator. Um, it made it convenient for me to glance in the notification to see what was waiting for me or just the charging status. Um, there's an always on display, which kind of does, you know, the same thing. But for me, it provided an easier glance at a distance to get that information. The last thing that I want to talk about are the cameras and thus the photos that are produced. I really like this camera. It's definitely one of the most versatile cameras because it offers so many different types of lenses. You have in wide and ultra wide and a telephoto. The only gripe that I have with this camera is that when I take pictures of people, it often looks a little bit soft and it's definitely a photo that I can tell was taken by a phone. Other than that though, it takes pictures of buildings, objects, even in a low light very well. And video is really, awesome as well. I really like this camera. 
So overall, it's been a pleasure owning this device. From handling it, the software, to the features that it brings, it's just justifies why it should be my daily device. But let me know in the comments, what are you rocking out with? And what's the best option for most people? Until next time, it's been Everton. Peace.